Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and Apple has just released the Mac OS Monterey 12.3.1 update. I'm going to go over everything that you're going to need to know about this update, plus some open core legacy patcher news for unsupported Macs. Let's jump in and get started. Apple released the 12.3.1 update along with iOS 15.41, iPadOS 15.41, tvOS 15.4.1, AudioOS for HomePod 15.4.1, and watchOS 8.5.1. On the Mac side, they only release Monterey's update. There was nothing released for Mac OS Big Sur, Catalina, or any Xcode updates. Right off the bat, there was many reports that the update was not showing in software update preferences. They kept refreshing, closing, and opening. It wouldn't work. When I made my post, there was multiple people saying, hey, I don't see the update. Where's the update? I'm not seeing it yet. But later in the day, around 3 or 4 o'clock Central Daylight Time, the update finally started to show up for people, and they were able to install it. What's great about this update is Apple has trimmed the size. If you are already on Mac OS Monterey 12.3, the update is going to be very small, only 1.34 gigabytes. If you are on a previous release, like 12.2.1 or below, it's going to be at least 4 gigabytes for you. And the reason behind that is, is that all of the universal control updates were in this update. But once you already had those on, Apple can slim down the update to 1.3 gigabytes in size. Our demonstration Mac today that we did our test on was a 2020 M1 13-inch MacBook Pro. The build version after the 12.3.1 update was 21E258. Now, how long did it take to install the 12.3.1 update? Well, on this particular Mac, it went by pretty quick. And the full time from preparing the update to a usable desktop was 25 minutes total install time. And again, that will vary with the speed of your Mac and the size of the update that you have to download. The 12.3.1 update did update the Apple Silicon M1 firmware to 74.59.101.3. If you have an Intel T2 Mac from 2018 to 2020, the bridge OS that runs a T2 security chip was also updated to 19.16.14.243. Apple also released a full installer for the 12.3.1 update, and the app version is 17.0.03. Now, I mentioned this, you might think that I mention this every time, but Apple in the past has not released a full installer for different point release versions. They usually do for major, but in the past they haven't. But they've been pretty good for Mac OS Monterey for releasing a full installer every single time there's a new update, which is really great, especially if you want to create a USB installer or you want to reinstall Mac OS or upgrade, for example, Big Sur to Mac OS Monterey. Apple also released a M1 IPSW restore file that you can use to restore M1 Macs version 12.3.1. I put that on my site for download. Now let's talk about what fixes are in the 12.3.1 update. This update fixes the following issues. USB-C or Thunderbolt external display does not turn on when connected to a Mac Mini 2018 as a secondary display. I've seen a lot of people complaining about that, so it's really great that that's fixed. The second issue is a Bluetooth device such as a game controllers may disconnect from your Mac after playing audio through some Beats headphones. What's interesting is there's still one fix missing from here. Now I'll show you where we can go to see where that is. If we go to the what's new in Mac OS Monterey update, page from Apple, we'll notice that there's a third one here that was not listed or might have been added later. And you can see here some 2021 MacBook Pro models cannot update or restore to Mac OS Monterey 12.3. In the same Reddit thread, there was someone that was asking, hey, I wonder if this fixes the 12.3 update quote bricking issue that affected some 2021 MacBook Pro owners that had their logic board replaced. This was reported on some sites like Mac Rumors that they found a couple people in the developer forums that were having this issue. I didn't report on it because when I was looking over the data, it was a very, very small amount of people that, again, you had to have a brand new Mac, 2021, 14 or 16 inch, and you had to have your logic board replaced to have this issue. Going back to this page here, if you think about it, this is starting to make some sense now because the people who had their logic board replaced on their 2021 MacBook Pro, they could not update no matter what they did to 12.3, whether it was a full installer, the update to the software update pane, or even an IPSW of 12.3 using Apple Configurator 2. The only fix was to unsoft brick them was to use the 12.2.1 IPSW and then they were able to revive the device. We even have our first confirmation here from extra WDW on the Mac Rumors forums. The 12.3.1 update is able to install on my Mac that previously had failed iBoot panics. So that's really great news. Hopefully other users who had a 2021 MacBook Pro can now update to 12.3.1. There's still a lot of talk about memory leaks in Mac OS Monterey and there's a lot of reports that some of the issues have been fixed in earlier updates and some of them have not even as new as 12.3. Howard Oakley at the website, which is one of my favorite websites, talks about 
this in length with multiple articles and he goes over a couple of different fixes that you can do and runs over multiple tests. Now there's no information yet if 12.3.1 has resolved any of those issues yet. We'll have to wait for user reports on this. Now let's talk about the security updates. A lot of times we gloss over the security updates, right? We just say, oh, 40 issues were fixed in this update. But when we look at the report here from Apple, we have to look at a couple of different things here. One of the major things is when you see something that says execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges, that's a pretty serious issue, meaning that someone could put something on your system to execute code on your system. Now, what is also an important thing to look at is that when Apple puts this wording in the release, Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited, meaning that this is a zero day. This issue could have been exploited previously, and we don't even know how long until it was reported to Apple by an anonymous researcher here, and then actually patched in the 12.3.1 update. So we've got two of those here that were patched. This is a heightened security issue, and that's why a point release, and they didn't wait till 12.4 to release this, and they dropped 12.3.1 to fix these issues. Now, Safari was also updated. Now, keep in mind, Safari is included in the 12.3.1 update, or any Monterey update. The previous two, like Mac OS Big Sur and Catalina, the update for Safari is always available as a separate download. For Mac OS Monterey, it was updated to 17.613.1.17.1.13. For Mac OS Big Sur and Mac OS Monterey as a separate download, that version was 16.613.1.17.1.13. Now, the other problem is, is that it was not listed on the security updates page for Safari. Only today, as of the 31st, listed for the previous version of Safari here on March 15th, 2022. So we'll have to see if there's any published CVEs. The fact that it was updated version tells me that something was addressed in there and it's just not on the page yet. Now let's talk about what's new in enterprise for macOS Monterey. Normally, Apple only puts in business and education type fixes in major update releases, like on 12.1, 2, or 3. So it's weird to see it in a point release update, but here it is. Resolves an issue where software update may become stuck at an Apple logo in progress bar. Now, why wasn't this put in the regular patch notes or on the other page? Why was it listed in enterprise? It's unknown. I wish, again, Apple would give us a little bit more information about this. Was this an upgrade issue from Big Big Sur to Monterey? Was it an update issue? Did it have something to do with MDM management? We don't know. But if you were having this issue, well, this is good news. Now let's go over the Geekbench benchmark scores here. I ran this before on this same device and we got a 1744 for a single core and a 7754 for a multi-core on 12.3 and on 12.3.1, very close 1744 and a 7744. And again, like I always say, I always run this just to make sure there's no big swings in any of the results in case there was a problem with the update, but we're looking pretty good here. Now, before I get to the unsupported Mac news with OpenCore Legacy Patcher, do I recommend the 12.3.1 update? Yes, I do, especially with those two zero days, right? And the fact that this looks almost like an emergency fix that Apple has released due to those issues, security issues being actively exploited in the wild. I update first just to make sure I don't see any major issues before you update. You have your personal machine. You're saying, hey, I don't know if I should update yet. That's why I update on a machine like this. This, and I update on an open core legacy patcher unsupported Mac device before you do just to make sure there's no issues. So yes, I do recommend installing the 12.3.1 update. Okay, now let's talk about Open Core Legacy Patcher for your unsupported Mac and running Mac OS Monterey. So our demonstration unit here today is a 2011 MacBook Pro 15 inch. And I installed the 12.3.1 update, no hiccups at all, using Open Core Legacy Patcher GUI version 0.4.3. And everything went really well. No issues, no hiccups so far. From what I can see, no issues. I always pick a Mac that needs the post install root patches because those are the ones that might see some of the most issues. And again, I see this in the comments and I see this on the discussion forums. After you install a software update with OpenCore Legacy Patcher and you have these root patches. Now, again, how do you know you need the root patches? You click on this button right here and it tells you if you need them. Don't leave it to question. If you see the there's graphics or miscellaneous in here, you need to install this after you install an update like 12.3.1 because Apple writes over those files. So you'll come back up and you'll say, hey, wait a minute, this system's slow. What's going on? Did something happen with the update? Nope, you just have to make sure you install the root patches after, reboot, and your Mac will be running great right after. Now, one trick that I told you in the 0.4.3 video is that there was some 
talk around, hey, I don't want to have to keep installing the 12 gigabyte update. Now you need to install that if you have to install the post volume patches. But if you uninstall those patches by reverting them, and then rebooting, you can install the 1.3 gigabyte update. And that's the beauty of that trick, right? You take those patches off, then it seals the system, and then you can update with a smaller update. And then when you come back up, just do the start root patching, and then you're right back from square one. The unsupported Mac with Mac OS Monitor at 12.3.1 is working very well so far. I haven't seen any reported issues. Multiple people have updated in the Open Core Legacy patch or Discord chat, so we're looking really good. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I hope this video created value for you. If it did, give it a thumbs up or a share. I'd really appreciate it. You can also follow me on Twitter and visit my website at mrmacintosh.com. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, you can click that subscribe button. And I also want to thank all my viewers and especially my patrons. You guys are amazing and it's growing every day and I really appreciate it. We'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.